Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Hello, my name is Jason Shapiro, and this is the first chapter in our complete Java training course. So let's start right at the beginning. What is Java? Most people know Java is a programming language. That's probably why you're taking this class. However, Java is really two separate things, a programming language and a platform. So as far as the programming language is concerned, it was designed to be simple, object-oriented, and familiar. They didn't want to reinvent the wheel completely when Java was created. So it was built on top of languages and constructs that had already existed. It's robust and secure. We'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. It's architecturally neutral and portable, meaning it's platform independent. Prior to this, if you were to write a program, you would most likely have to compile that program for the underlying architecture, the underlying operating system. With Java, you should be able to write once, run anywhere. Java is interpreted, threaded, and dynamic. We'll discuss those three terms coming up in this chapter. And it's also high performing. So as I mentioned, Java was designed to be familiar. It was based on programming languages, primarily C++, that came before it. So when Java was created, they said, look, you know, some of this works well. Let's just change the things that don't work as well, and maybe some ideas that we've come up since that time. So a lot of other programming languages, good qualities, uh, can still be found inside of Java. They also tried to remove the complexities found in other languages. So things that were causing uh, developers problems, such as memory management or uh, multiple inheritance, a lot of those things were removed from Java. So its simplicity and familiarity are owed to its origins. As you start to write Java applications, there are a lot of places that you can introduce problems into your application. Luckily, Java checks for these problems in several different locations at several different times. So as you try to compile your code, which is the process of writing a program and then changing it into a different format that's better understood by an underlying container, uh, the compile process will check to see if you have any errors. Now, it's not going to catch every error. Uh, but it's going to catch quite a few, and so you'll be able to fix these before you actually deploy your application or distribute your application. However, there are problems that you can run into at runtime, so there is also runtime checking that happens with your application. There's internal memory management, so instead of having to allocate or deallocate space in the memory yourself, Java will provide ways of doing that for you. So this provides robust and secure applications. As I mentioned, Java is a write once, run anywhere environment, meaning I should be able to write my program, I should be able to compile it into what is called bytecode, and that should be able to be run on any platform that has a container for Java. We'll talk about containers in just a minute. So that means that Java applications are interpreted. The bytecode that we will produce is interpreted by the container for the underlying operating system, which means we don't have to keep writing more and more programs for every environment that we want to test in. So this interpretive nature of Java will result in rap faster, rapid development. So we can do better prototyping, we can do more experimentation. In addition, it helps avoid the compile, link, and test cycles that you have in older, non-interpreted styles of development. So the Java language and runtime are dynamic in their linking, pooling, and code only as needed. So that means we can delegate or, or wait till runtime to decide exactly what it is we're going to call. I may know that I want to speak to a database. However, which database that I'm going to speak to, that decision can be made at runtime. So I can change my sources. I can uh, check for sources on a network. I can check for sources locally. But really, I can delegate that decision to runtime. So this enables transparent updating of applications, not to mention quite a bit of flexibility. So these features, along with Java's extensive API, an API is an application programming interface, 
also known as a library, I have led it to be the number one in programming language popularity. So let's break down the, the high-level archi high architecture of the Java platform. The Java platform has two main components, the JVM, which is known as the Java Virtual Machine, and the Java API, the Java Application Programming Interface. Again, that's your library. So if you look at this diagram here, you'll see at the very bottom you have your hardware, your operating system. On top of that, you have your JVM. Now, this is the container that I was just mentioning. It's the it's the responsibility of the Java virtual machine to be able to read your code, your compiled bytecode, and then interpret it and later transform it into machine code for the underlying hard hardware or operating system. On top of the container, top of the Java virtual machine, you have your libraries, and that's your Java API. And on top of all of that, that's where your Java application lives. So your Java application will be calling into these Java APIs that are provided for you, and it will be run inside the Java virtual machine. The Java API is a large collection of ready-made software components that provide many useful capabilities. So it's this API that's going to provide all of your input-output, your I.O., your GUIs, your graphical user interface, database access, and quite a bit more. The way that the API is organized is that it's grouped into different libraries of related components. These are known as packages. And so your Java apps will call into these library components. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel if someone's already created it for you. This is definitely going to reduce your development and, in fact, your testing time. Now, which APIs, which libraries are available to you will depend on which version and edition of Java that you are using. The Java Virtual Machine, the JVM, insulates your application from platform specifics. Again, write once, run anywhere. Now, I mentioned that Java is at first an interpreted language. Um, in fact, Java apps are both compiled and interpreted. The Java compiler is going to take your source code, the code that you write, and it's going to transform this into something that's called bytecode. Bytecode is not actually machine-level code. It's not machine code that the underlying hardware or operating system would understand directly. Instead, it's a form of code, a form of machine code that's understood by the Java virtual machine, the JVM. So each different platform, whether it's Unix or a Macintosh or a PC, will have their own Java virtual machine. And they'll know how to read your bytecode, the compiled code that you made, and it will be able to interpret that for the underlying hardware. So the JVM translate, it interprets this bytecode into machine code, which gets run by the actual platform. So bytecode is like the machine code for the JVM. The bytecode is platform independent, and therefore it can be interpreted by any JVM. So you still take a look at the uh, diagram that we have here, and you'll see that you create a Java application. This would be your source code that you type. You compile that using a Java compiler, and that creates bytecode. The bytecode is what you're going to be distributing to people if you want them to run your application. The bytecode itself is run inside of a Java virtual machine. That's your container. It's going to interpret that into machine code, and the underlying hardware system will then run your machine code. We'll talk about more information on the JVM later in this chapter. So what do you need to actually run a Java program? It's pretty simple. You need to have what's called the Java runtime environment. And really, what is a Java runtime environment? Your JRE. It's nothing more than your JVM and the Java API. That's it. That's your Java runtime environment. It does not include any tools to create or develop a Java application. You'll need something different if you want to write Java code. But for running, all you need is that JRE. So how do you get started writing Java applications? Typically what you'll do is you'll download the Java platform from our Oracle. There's a URL here that, uh, where you can download the Java platform. And this is known as the JDK, the Java Development Kit. The JDK includes your JRE, so your your Java virtual machine and your Java API libraries, but it also includes a set of tools uh, for development, such as a compiler, a debugger, 
a documentation tool. Java 6 also includes a profiling tool for performance. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com.